Hi, and welcome to Unprecedented Journey. I'm your host, Jeff Oppenheim, and if you've been tuning in for previous episodes, you know that this is a place and a resource for you to learn about best practices, ways to motivate yourself, and be productive during this period of time, the downtime that we have, so that we can actually put the best practices in place when we get out of this downtime and put them into place in our daily life. And I think right about now, that's plenty to meditate on. And I thought that's exactly what we should concentrate on this episode. So I asked a monk I know, the Venerable Huedon, in um, a temple out in California, the Shili Temple. And he's joining us today to talk about Buddhism and talk about, more specifically, the practice of meditation and how we can apply it in our daily lives. Thank you so much for joining us today, Venerable Waidong. Thank you for having me, Jeff. You're based in California. Tell me a little bit about what I see that's so splendid behind you and what I could experience if I came to your temple. I'm at the Shilai Temple, uh, which is uh, located uh, in California, um, the greater Los Angeles area. Shilai Temple, uh, it's uh, one of the largest uh, Buddhist temples in this area. Uh, it's uh, um, probably in the country. And um, uh, we have uh, about uh, 35 monks and nuns here. And we prax- practice uh, what we call humanistic Buddhism, which is uh, promoting and practicing Buddhism in daily life. When you say Buddhism, I think most of us have a general understanding, or at least think we know, but maybe you could give us the basic aspects of Buddhism, and then we'll talk about meditation specifically. Buddhism originally, I wouldn't say it's really a religion. Um, It's really just uh, for people to uh, realize the potential of their own mind, and uh, through practicing um, the of the, the disciplines, uh, which is, uh, you know, to discipline oneself and then uh, meditation. And uh, also uh, there are, uh, you know, tons of other uh, ways to practice the Buddhism. And uh, the, the purpose is to eliminating greed, anger, and ignorance. Well, those are certainly relevant themes these days. Uh, so I guess even more of a reason for us to take that breath and practice meditation. Let's talk specifically about meditation. What are the key elements of meditation? How do I go about it in my daily life? Facing this situation, um, people, uh, some people uh, panic, some people have, uh, have a fear, um, some people, uh, they have a worry, so they might uh, even uh, lost uh, family members. Uh, so practicing meditation can definitely help them, help them to um, relieve themselves from all these uh, stress and anxiety. It's simply um, to uh, cultivate our own mind and heart. Mind and heart right now is exactly what it's all about, isn't it? Right on the home front with our own family or whoever we're stuck in the house with, as it were. And then also outwardly really immediately I think of our healthcare providers and all the people that we want to expand our energy and our heart to directly. Can we do that through meditation and our practice? We all stuck in the house and uh, this is a perfect timing for us to practice meditation. Um, and um, yeah, that's, uh, the meditation, it doesn't require us to, uh, to have anything. We can just uh, sit on, uh, in the chair, sit um, on the bed, um, you know, ideally to sit um, on a cushion, um, but it's uh, not necessarily to, to have it. Uh, I know you, uh, people cannot go out to buy these stuff. Uh, it's not essential right now. Uh, and uh, we uh, can practice it uh, just uh, simply at home. Uh, as long as uh, you bear uh, uh, with yourself with uh, about 15, 20 minutes, um, that's good enough. Even just uh, uh, five minutes or 10 minutes uh, every day, you get, uh, that would get you a good start. What are the key elements physically to practice meditation the right way and set, set the mind-body at work together? There's no absolute right uh, or wrong way to do the meditation. As long as you feel your body is relaxed, um, your shoulders are relaxed, and you're, you feel just natural, and that's good. 
One of the key points is you don't want to lean back to the back of your chair. Of your chair. Uh, you don't want to lean back to the wall uh, because of that would um, easily uh, get you to fall asleep. One of the hardest things, I think, especially for us New Yorkers in a city that's go, 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 but also in California as well, is how do I quiet the mind, right? It's sort of that joke of going note to self, stop thinking about notes to self. <laughs> how do I quiet the mind long enough? And what are those practices that help me bring my thoughts inward? The easiest way is to focusing on something rather than simply uh, trying to empty the mind, which um, actually is basically is uh, impossible because the mind is always functioning and uh, doing something. And um, having the, uh, seeing the mind is uh, always in um, this way and we can just uh, train it to focus on something. Uh, for example, your breathing. The breathing is natural. It doesn't have a, a value. It doesn't have any um, spe specific meanings. And uh, focusing on an in and out breath, uh, especially um, when we are breathing uh, at the tip of the nose, and that's the easiest point to notice the breathing. And uh, that would um, help us to uh, bring the mind to the focus and eventually bring it uh, to peace. Breathing is so important. I know it from teaching and practicing public speaking, of course, it fuels the voice. But I also know even from martial arts practice as well, it's chi, right? It's energy to the whole body and mind. Exactly. When we are uh, focusing on our own breath, we are actually, um, what's really happening to the mind, it is, uh, um, it is uh, letting go other stuff on the mind. They might uh, think about uh, how many people are affecting the virus. Uh, they, they might be worrying about uh, um, their family members uh, or uh, having, uh, you know, would have this virus. So it, there are so uh, many things on our mind. There would be um, the works, the relationships, you know, so many things. And however, when we are focusing and bringing our mind back to the focal point, which is uh, your breathing, and um, um, we are letting go all those worries. And therefore, eventually, once the mind is being able to concentrate on our breathing long enough, and that is a, a like, um, it's like a cleansing the mind with the breathing um, and uh, cleanse it and make it uh, pure uh, from uh, um, all other um, items on the, on the mind. Let me ask you this too, it, especially for those people not familiar with meditation, but maybe familiar with some form of prayer, right? Saying your prayers at the end of the night kind of thing. Sometimes we pray or we meditate as a means to address an issue or problem to seek an answer. But it sounds like in some ways you're saying the best meditation practice is to not necessarily go at it from there, but let it go, concentrate on something else. And from there, maybe you'd be center enough to find an answer. Am I hearing that right? Yes. Um, the, uh, the key of uh, practicing meditation is uh, not to insert a certain values, uh, religious or, or uh, cultural um, or other values um, in the mind. Uh, however, um, it's, uh, I think it's a very natural to start with a prayer um, for people in different religions. And uh, they, um, because of it, it's, uh, it's, because of it, it's uh, uh, maybe already an, a habit for them to calm themselves down by starting with a prayer. And uh, they can do that, uh, praying to the God, uh, praying to um, what is uh, sacred to them, uh, praying even, you know, just uh, uh, send a, a message of, uh, um, you know, the good wishes, send the good wishes uh, to the family members, uh, to uh, those that beloved ones. And then um, they actually, that would relax their mind and even relax their body. And then they can start uh, focusing on their in and out breathing.
So that's a um, that's a good start. Well, this is such an illuminating conversation, and one might say a, a many layered or maybe even eightfold conversation, to use a Buddhist term. Where can I go for more resource if I'm new to meditation or even if I'm coming at it to expand my resources as someone who practices meditation? There are plenty of uh, resources nowadays on the internet and we have a, a, a website uh, for our own temple uh, which is a www.hsilai.org shilai.org and we have uh, some materials um, materials for practicing meditation online and I also recommend a book which is uh, written by one of the masters uh, at our temple. Is there anything else you would like to leave us with Venerable Weidong? I would uh, wish uh, everyone um, good health and um, safe um, in this a very special time and um, um, during the time you are staying at home uh, meditation seems a very good way to uh, bring your mind in peace and also having compassion uh, to your family members, to your neighbors, and to all the people in the world. Again, Venerable Wei Dong, thank you so much. And uh, I intend to put into practice immediately what we talked about today. And thank you for joining us today for Unprecedented Journey. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel you can also leave a comment or a question. I'll get back to you, I promise. Certainly press like or follow us on social media. And in the meantime, please stay safe, stay well, and after today's episode, stay meditating.